Lecture 3-3, supplement, take one. Hello, class. This is the supplement to Lecture 3-3, where I talk more about graphing reciprocals. I think maybe not a lot of people have experience with graphing the flip of something like that, so I'm going to take a little moment aside and just sort of walk you through the practice of how do we graph the reciprocal of something. So let's start off with something easy. Let's talk about the regular old line y equals x. And that's a very easy line. We all have known that since Algebra 1. And we're just going to graph this guy like so. There's your ordinary line. Now let's pick another color. Let's do blue and let's graph y equals 1 over x, the reciprocal of that. So there are some points now that we might need to think carefully about in order to be able to construct this. If we've been plugging in some x's and getting some y's and then now we're going to talk about the flip of that. Well when we plugged in 1 before that got us 1 and what's the reciprocal of 1? Well, this is one of those nice ones that doesn't change at all. That it, right there, we're going to have a point in common. That where the y value was 1, if we flip over that y value, we still get 1. That's nice. Is there anything else that doesn't change when we flip it over? Yes. When we plug in negative 1 down here in the fourth quad third quadrant, we got negative 1. And the flip of that, if you have negative 1 over 1 and you flip that over, you still get negative 1. So that's going to be the other nice one there. But some of these are a bit more tricky, like up at 2 there. What's the flip of 2? Well, 2 as a fraction is 2 over 1. And the reciprocal of 2 over 1 is 1 over 2. So here at x equals 2, we're going to have a y value of half. And at 3, we're going to, that's 3 over 1. That's going to flip over to a third, and, a, and 4 to a fourth, and 5 to a fifth. So we're going to get much more closer and closer and closer with tiny little fractions. But we're never going to make it to 0. At 100, we're going to be at a hundredth. At a billion, we're going to be at a billionth. These just aren't going to go down to nothing. Also true then, if, if 2 flips over to half, then half is going to flip over 2. Is that if we have some, uh, some values like 2, uh, or excuse me, we already did 2. I'm talking about half. If we've got a half, then the, originally that was half, and now the flip of that is going to be 2 over 1. So this uh, x equals half the y value is half as well, the flip of that y value is going to be 2. And at a, a third, we'll get 3. And at a fourth, we'd turn into 4. So again, we're going to just snake up here along that axis, and we're going to get closer and closer to it. But right there at 0, if I try to plug in 0, ah, there's no way I can't plug in 0. 1 over 0 is undefined. We don't know what that means. So that's going to turn into an asymptote. Anywhere that my original graph was 0, I'm going to flip that over. 0 um, meant I've got now, instead of 0 over 1, I've got 1 over 0. Yikes. Who knows what that is? It's not any real value. It's an asymptote. Now, the crazy thing, too, is that all of these values that worked for positives, you just smack a negative sign on these, and all the same rules apply. The flip of negative a half is negative 2. The flip of negative 2 is negative a half. And we're going to get the same kind of behavior on the other side. So maybe this one is kind of deceptively simple. All the x values equal all the y values, and then we just flip them all over. So I'm betting maybe you've got it a little twisted in your mind about, am I flipping over the x value? So let's, let's try another one here. Let's do another graph of something that will let us test our knowledge a little bit more. So let's do a different graph. And should we do a polynomial? Yeah, let's do, let's do some kind of 
polynomial looking kind of graph. And again, we'll start off with the regular old graph in black. So let's, um, let's do some twisty thing that starts here and it goes up to there and then it, sh it shoots off. Let's, let's go up to there and then down like that. And here let's have a bunch more waves. Let's go up and down like that. All right. So there's my uh, crazy graph, and this is a polynomial type graph, so it's, it's not gonna, it's, it doesn't have any asymptotes. So we're not starting off with any asymptotes, but we are starting off with some zeros. So these moments here where the original graph crossed the x-axis, those zeros there, what's the reciprocal of zero? So, so zero, you could think of it as zero over two or zero over a hundred, whatever you wanted to think about it as a fraction as. If we flip that over now, then we are talking about two over zero or a hundred over zero, which is undefined. And undefined in algebra means asymptote in graph. So we can get a bunch of asymptotes at all those spots. Everywhere where this original function was equal to zero, we're going to get an asymptote. So then, what's the next easiest ones to draw? Well, the, from the example I just did, the reciprocal of one is one. The reciprocal of negative one is negative one. So those are some pretty obvious ones that will stay the same. We need to touch the graph at those spots and, and be the same there, okay? So I kind of got a little bit too twisty there. But um, those are all going to be the same. Now, what about the twos? The reciprocal of two, the reciprocal of two uh, flips over to one half. So that means anywhere that I see a two in my graph, I need a half. So there's a two, there's a half. And the same goes for negative. The reciprocal of negative 2 is negative half. So anywhere that I see a 2 in my uh, graph, I need a half. And then that works the other way as well. Anywhere that I see a half, I'm going to get a 2. So here's a half. I need to be up at 2. There's a half. I need to be up at 2. Half at 2. Half at 2. And half at to anywhere there else. That, that graph I did a little bit too tight over there. This is not going to work out perfectly. Half and two, stuff like that. Okay, so I hope what you're seeing here is that tiny fractions become big numbers and big numbers become tiny fractions. So, so the, the, the principles here, if we sort of had to list this as principles, is that tiny fractions uh, flip over into big numbers and vice versa. Plus or minus one flips over into itself. Positive one flips to positive one, negative one flips to negative one, and all the zeros flip over into asymptotes and vice versa. Okay, so that's kind of the, the big broad principles of graphing reciprocals. So let's, let's try to play connect the dots here. Okay, so we've got an asymptote there, so I need to be swooshing up towards zero. Here I'm sort of staying at one and then going down a little lower and flipping back up like that. Here we need to get in there and then down that way and flipping there, coming a little bit up that way, going back down. Uh, this one never quite made it to one, so there, there, and there. So the black graph is the original polynomial type graph that I just made up, and then the blue is the flip of that. Should we do one more? Let's do one more. Let's do one more so um, we, can, we can practice thinking about this here. Let me erase all of this.
Okay, we're back from the fast cam here, so let's let's try uh, zooming in pretty tightly here on the sine graph. Let's do sine. Let's do y equals sine x. So we'll 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 zoom in a lot here, and we'll do uh, this is one, and so this is uh, negative one, and we need to make it to three sixty in one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, seven eight. We'll do we'll do three sixty right there. So that means halfway is one eighty. Half of that is ninety, and half over there is two seventy. Okay. So here's our big broad graph, and uh, we know when does it make it up to half? Sine of what is a half? Sine of thirty is a half. So by the one third mark there, I need to be up at half. And then I'm at 1, and the 1 third the other way, and the zeros, and the 1 third the other way, and the zeros, like that. Okay, so now I can draw a decent-ish. Have I mentioned that I'm not an art teacher? Uh, is gr graph like that, and of course, it continues on the other side, like so, and like that. Okay, so there's our sine graph. Now this is the one that uh, flipping uh, it over is most useful because the flip of this has a name. It is cosecant. So that same set of principles that I talked about here of tiny fractions flip uh, over to uh, big numbers and that 1 flips over to 1, negative 1 flips over to negative 1. Let's keep those principles in mind, especially the 0 to asymptote 1. So the 1s are going to be in common, including the negative 1s and the positive 1s. Those are going to be in common. Everywhere that our function was equal to 0, those are going to be asymptotes. Asymptotes galore for all those zeros. And then some of the more useful things that we can find here are the spots where it was half. Half flips over to 2, which is a little bit out of my window, but every time that I had a, a half there, those halves, those are going to flip over to 2's. And the negative halves are going to flip over to negative 2. Get out of the way, words. And the negative halves. Let's do a couple more of those. So that one flipped over to there, and that one flipped over to there. Extra dots. Okay, so what that means then is that we can play connect the dots now with getting up towards those asymptotes that go on for forever. So the ones flipped over to ones, the halves flipped over to twos, and now we can see why cosecant looks like it does. And you can double check that one in your calculator. So I hope that helps you broadly speaking. If you were taking notes, then rewind the video and, and get those three things. Big numbers to tiny fractions and vice versa. Ones to ones and vice versa. Zeros to asymptotes and vice versa. Those are the big takeaways from graphing reciprocal functions.